We are back with another episode of the Bourgeoisy podcast. I believe this is episode five. Uh, I'm Aditya Khanna. With me is my very good friend Shona Kodaikar. Shona, say hi. Hello. Episode five or season two? Episode one? Season. I. You want to keep it seasons? I. I don't. I did not think of it that way. But how else do you explain our little hiatus? I mean, our hiatus is explained as nothing really that major was happening in world politics. That I feel like. I consider us to be special forces when it comes to current affairs. So I didn't feel like the world needed special forces. Gujarat election happened, predictable. Delhi MCD elections happen, predictable. Also, it's called McDonald elections for a reason that it's very normal, doesn't matter. So um, I mean, the the world didn't really need us. That's how I look at it. What do you think? I think the I think Mr. Raga could have used our help considering he was on his Bharat Jodo Yatra. Oh yeah, he is doing that. I, that's not even somehow on our list of topics yeah. to discuss, which should tell you how well that is going. <laughs> But yeah, what do you, what do you do? You have opinions on the Bharat Jodo Yatra? Eh, I mean, how how does it take? Do you have opinions on the Bharat Jodo Yatra? I mean, it's one of those things that one cannot have opinions on because uh, it is such a lukewarm thing. Yeah, it's like Very bland. Yeah, it's like upma. Yeah, it is like upma. especially not spicy upma not spicy also have you Highly noticed salted upma na, just continuing the bourgeoisy tradition of uh, discussing the hair care and the skin care routines of politicians have you noticed noticed mm-hmm. have you noticed rahul gandhi's karl marx beard i have i am quite impressed by his beard honestly i am very impressed i, I think it think. i think it adds gravitas to him hmm. but then he is rahul gandhi so i am assuming he will do something to mess that up as well yeah like i i could never imagine i was very impressed by that beard because i could never imagine him being able to carry it off like i don't think like that's the last thing in my political bingo card that i would have that <laughs> rahul gandhi with karl marx beard narendra modi with rabindranath tagore beard like i don't know wh- i don't know why we are in this era of cosplay I mean our politicians are doing more intense cosplay than like anime weebs you know what i'm saying yeah i do but by going by his going by his own admission hmm. rahul gandhi's persona is like a presentation of the media it's not who he really is yeah who is he really though shonak according to you i think he is like a i think he's like a cool foreign educated lad but that's about it i don't think hmm. he's i don't think he's got the street cred uh, i think he's a the moving on <laughs> move, 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 <laughs> move, moving classic. on classic moving on from the bharat jodo yatra we don't really have much to say yeah. though do you want to actually discuss this before we move into our regular topics for today what do you want to discuss about the bharat jodo yatra no i mean he's been meeting people which is a thing that you do you he met like raghuram rajan where they discussed elementary economic concepts with each other and then like kamal hasan famous is joined him def- different actors are joining him you know what really gets to me though i think he's going to have that crazy t-shirt tan that you get from riding on bikes cuz he's been wearing that <laughs> same cut <coughs> and like <coughs> just above his biceps he's going to be like not tanned and below the biceps he's going to be tanned so when he like takes off his shirt and looks in the mirror he's just going to be like that chocolate vanilla you could, pudding swirl so, so basically what you're saying is he's not going to be rahul gandhi anymore he's going to be rahul tan the <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i can't get behind that though i don't think i can you don't like tanned people is that is there is there something that you need to admit on i no i mean i never said that i don't like tanned people i love tanned people i uh, i regularly spray tan myself do you, do you have tanned friends as well i do have a few tra- friends that are little tanned so you don't call them fair weather friends This is a joke for everyone who was in their literature societies in their college. Fair weather friends. I have not heard that term in like fucking decades. Decades, decade. Yeah. You want to recount the important things that have happened though since? Yeah, we could. I mean, okay, Bharat Jodo Yatra was one. Uh, Kanye West absolutely losing his fucking mind. Is that, another. That was another one. Yeah, that's another. You know, twenty twenty two just wrapping this year up as well is. I mean, it has been an interesting political bingo card. It, yeah. Everything that you uh, wouldn't imagine. Kanye becoming a Nazi, 
I mean, okay, we might have seen that coming a little bit. Like, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, he was he was yeah. going there. He was going to get there. Elon Musk having his own sort of little fucking meltdown like a baby, and his stock. You know the Tesla stock. Okay, we are going to be discussing. Yeah, we are going to talk about Elon Musk in detail. Way. So fuck you guys. Wait till end. And there's um, uh, there's another important thing that happened this year which we didn't talk about. The election. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Men and women cricketers get equal match fees now. Yeah. So take that, feminists. Take that, feminists. I don't know. So the third wave of fem- feminism is about uh, equal wages now. So uh, like victory for them, but also take that because now what will they do? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, moving on from that point. Uh, uh, just, just to you know, clarify, we are, we are not anti-feminists. Are you not, Shonak? Are you, no. are you sure you're not? No, no. Okay, I'm not. Uh, I'm a feminist. I'm a feminist. I'm a feminist. My mother is a woman. My mother. Oh fuck. Okay. Oh yeah, another important thing that happened uh, while we were away. was the gujarat delhi and um, himachal pradesh himachal election. e- elections as i mentioned also i must say himachal pradesh elections is what i want to experience in my life once not because i want to go there for elections i just so want to go to himachal pradesh all the time yeah. <laughs> i was just going to say that you can just go to kasol when when they don't have elections also yeah how do they how does i am just very curious how does a state And such a fucking contrasting election, Sean. Like I feel like the Election Commission of India also has a great sense of humor, because they put the Gujarat state elections, which is a state which has prohibition, along with the state Himachal Pradesh state elections, which is famously a state that is quite on the other end of the prohibition spectrum. I will you know? need a geographical clarification though. Is Kasol hmm. in Uttarakhand or Himachal only? Himachal, Himachal, Himachal only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that part becomes a little blurry for me. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It it must, but you know. Yeah, it it's crazy. I think the election commission definitely planned this with something in mind. I think they had an agenda. Because right. because how will BJP work both those like, you know? Yeah. How, how will BJP how work you, both those? How do you how do you steal somebody's liquor and say bad manners on one hand, and hand someone a joint and say have fun, bro, on the other? Like, how do you do that? It's very hard, I think. I think they can just rely on the old cultural argument that in our in our in our culture, this was the thing. Bhang to hai. Holi pe bhang to hota. Hota hai, bhai sahab. So, मतलब alcohol थोड़ा bad है लेकिन alcohol very bad actually. I I what do you prefer generally, Shonak? Drugs or alcohol? I don't do illegal things. You don't do illegal things. Are no. you sure about that? Yeah. Okay. The only illegal things that I do is uh, <laughs> thought you would get me like that, na CBI. <laughs> <laughs> nice try CBI. So that is what happened. Himachal Pradesh Congress won somehow because everyone's high as fuck. <laughs> okay, like in altitude, of course. And Gujarat. I think they saw the won. hand symbol and thought it was like the marijuana plant thing. <laughs> <laughs> Such low hanging fruit. Gujarat Gujarat Congress won. What did they see in the lotus lotus symbol? Nothing. No, nothing. I think no. they just saw misery, misery, and Gujarat Gujarati people, as we have always maintained on this podcast, at least I have, uh, the Gujarati people are the main nemesis of this podcast. To be very honest, <laughs> at least one part of this podcast that is represented by me, Shonak is making it very clear that he does not believe in this school of thought. But uh, I carry no biases or prejudices. Yeah, except for. Uh, <laughs> 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 Oof. Oof! It's all coming out today, boys. Himachal Congress wins. Gujarat BJP wins. Delhi MCD, also known as McDonald's, McDonald's election. election. <laughs> May Aam Aadmi Party wins. Aam Aadmi Party tried very hard. It was a proper enthu cutlet try hard kind of zone in the Gujarat elections. Shona, what did you think of their chances before the results actually came out? I believe they won five seats. I thought they would have. They they had a good chance to do better. Because hmm. uh, anecdotally speaking, of course. There were people in Gujarat who weren't very happy with the BJP. There were, uh, strangely enough, there were middle-aged uncles who were ranting against uh, the prime minister mm. and his politics. So I thought maybe the Aam Aadmi Party had a chance, but no, nope, S- swept it right under their feet, swept mm. it right from under their feet with a jhadu. <laughs> you know, they swept it with a jhadu, which is uh, fascinating. Throw some lotuses on that. Throw some lotuses on that. Pick it up with your hands. So. 
uh, uh, that's a symbol of all the political parties and we are being very clever yes but yeah yeah so those are the elections uh, boring as fuck i don't mean need to <laughs> need to say anything else about these the most predictable elections ever um so yeah all of this shit happened while we were away uh kanye west as we uh, do you want to elaborate a little bit of that because i know shauna you are a big fan of kanye you are a big fan of rap music um so yeah do, what do you think of kanye losing his mind i think it's a uh, i think it's a great loss to rap music entirely because uh, otherwise we wouldn't have gems like the video of i guess we wouldn't know you know the one where he goes like everybody was asking me what would i do if i didn't win and then he just drops the mic and he says i guess we wouldn't know ha huh, correct just stuff like that but i think that was a good pet predictor that he was going to lose it yeah. at some point of time as well so overall not a great loss because he's not been producing great music over the last few years uh-huh. but uh, it don't be a nazi dot can you come on yeah. get your shit together i mean i actually i saw some of his interviews in full okay <clears throat> the one where he is even even the one where he is wearing a fucking uh, balenciaga balenciaga that mask yeah right like that branded yeah, yeah, mask thing, thing yeah we add on alex jones and the funniest part of that whole thing is that alex jones is trying to pull kanye west back from yeah. the fucking right wing yeah. he's like it's too much for alex jones okay which is insane to me like how can you go right of alex jones despite being like you know such a big fucking artist or whatever like a recurrent theme that i've seen is all these right wing newbies getting extreme and like more like older heads of the right wing just say okay guys that's that's crazy even for us now i think it's also because the older talking heads have been a part of this whole debate uh, for a much longer time and they know that w- that certain things even if they believe them like i i think alex jones believes everything that uh, that kanye was saying but he also knows uh better than to publicly say that because they have been in that sphere for longer they know that this is what you get yeah. you can't actually even yeah, you however can't, you can't cross cross yeah, that line however far right you maybe you can't cross certain lines and he's crossing them but that's the problem with the newbie right wingers no even with that, that's the thing and we'll enter into the elon musk discussion right now right and that's that's two things that have happened donald trump has said at different times of course that kanye west was too extreme for him and elon musk is becoming too extreme for him because elon musk tried to restore his twitter account and trump just said no you know what i'm not getting back on twitter but i am actually kind of uh, fascinated by elon musk's whole thing and the elon musk fans as well i mean i know some very rational not personally but like i've seen online people who i follow who i thought were super fucking rational and they are like really head over heels for elon musk i think but they've also stopped supporting him now in the past week or so because one uh, i think when you uh, when you basically slam your company's stock down to almost like i think it's down 50% over the past year by the way tesla stock is down 50% yeah plus when he's fucking sharing all right memes like yeah. this morning he shared a meme shitting on uh, planned parenthood like he's clearly shitting on abortions he's shitting on the vaccine he's shitting on like gay people there is an ottoman ka the, the muslim like the ottoman symbol yeah. is there on the on yeah. this flag that he shared today i'll put up that thing for the youtube viewers the meme that he shared so yeah i mean he's clearly lost his mind i really can't comprehend why somebody like donald trump like you know all the think pieces that were written in 2016 17 that you know donald trump is becoming that um sort of larger than life crazy hate figure but if donald trump is also realizing that these people are too far gone what does that mean are we are we heading towards a, a you know a sort of industrial industrialist led dictatorship not a dictatorship but just a, these become our primary thought leaders these fucking idiots of the highest order no see that's best. not dictatorship not political dictator i mean like in terms of cultural leaders so so here's what i think right so it's not 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 what i think it's it's here's what i've found out and sort of gotten he he went from this so i used to go on nine gag a lot okay very very gang gang of you yeah so <laughs> nine gag in 2013 and 14 mm-hmm. would fucking worship elon musk yeah like elon musk was considered tony stark he was your edgy genius he was this complex mysterious figure 
and then i don't know what the fuck happened to him i think he just couldn't handle the fame i think he just became like a little bit of a fame whore but you know just going back on that a yeah. little bit and i know this whole image there was a ashley wands book also on yeah. him where he is i remember the cover of that book i would never you wouldn't catch me dead reading that but uh, the the cover of that book was uh, like you know this he's dressed up like iron man a little yeah. bit there is all this metal stuff around him looked very similar to tony stark and the thing is he's not even a real inventor yeah he he bought tesla see like, that's the thing if he if he just kept quiet yeah and sat in the shadows and basked in his and basked in this you know a fame that people were throwing on him nobody would have found out the thing is he started exposing like he got over exposed in the media and then people started digging yeah. and around the lockdown and like covid people and that is the time i found out that he had not invented tesla most mm. of his shit is like he's been involved in shady deals and shit like that he and he takes credit for the yeah, scientists that making know. himself the yeah. face of all of these things you know and suddenly now today he's considered like a spaceman innovator and all and uh, another another interesting marker is uh, so i was looking at some stuff for uh, business school applications and stuff mm. like that and by the a, way all of you all of you fuckers wish shonak best of luck i hope uh, shonak you get into a great college thanks man thanks and one day you uh, one day you you too can lord over elon musk with your massive checkbook uh if capitalism is a nice cream i'm going to lick it yeah lick it all day man lick, lick it, it lick it down to like that little little part at the end of the cone yeah. <laughs> you know good, like that good big slopes yeah give Just give, give it a little slope like yeah <laughs> man that's how you lick that capitalism ice cream but yeah moving on <laughs> 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 on elon musk so so here's a so here's a marker okay that uh, when they were telling me about interview preparations hmm. and they said uh here here's, here was a predicted question who was your role model and so the person doing the interview said over the last 2 3 years before the last 2 3 years it would like 8 out of 10 would be like elon musk hmm. and now nobody says that <laughs> people don't say elon musk anymore oh, like he's just dropped in that perception and these are b school kids okay these are the ones who these are the kids. these are his fucking core base demographic yeah, yeah his core base another interesting anecdote though there was a 40 year old uh, b school representative i won't name who who had come to promote his uh, b school and uh, he he of course gave the he, he gave uh, the, uh, arindam chaudhary no, it wasn't arindam chaudhary <laughs> <laughs> he gave he gave the example of elon musk okay but he didn't stop there he just went like oh 10 years ago nobody knew him now he's such a great innovator he's changed the game this that and then for no reason at all unprompted he just goes like or yaar handsome bhi to hai na yaar admit karo mast dikhta hai na but he doesn't so, even what the fuck are you selling here dude like yeah. I get that you want to I get that you have Elon Musk as a reference for his business tactics Dude, whatever business and tech bros would love to would love to like do some very nasty things with Elon Musk's body man I'm telling you the way the fucking techies talk about him on twitter alone yeah, they are fucking cultish they are not even they're one step above cultish they have like a fetish for him I feel like I can ima- like I'm sure I won't be surprised if like there are at least a million searches for on pornhub for like you know elon musk tesla car fucking you know like it's rule 34 inside rule 34 kind of porn so elon musk had tweeted his uh, pronouns are prosecute fauci i first of all i don't understand why is he such a dada ji about these things like why i can understand some fucking redneck going about on about like fauci or sharing this as a joke but Dude, you are a fu- you just shut the fuck up now for like five minutes. Like, why the fuck <clears throat> a clear like scam? St- like, this is a man, by the way. Just let's just look at the past year or so. This is a man. First of all, he kept dumping his Tesla stock while yeah. telling people to buy, right? Uh, he then offered to buy Twitter on Twitter as a joke. Made a bid, realized he couldn't pay it. Yeah. Tried to back out. The court forced him to buy it. he then took back the lawsuit and then just decided to buy it anyway at 44 billion dollars by dumping more tesla stock and he's backed by saudi investors apparently yeah so and there's like a whole exactly. conflict of interest so the he is doing all of these things his primary company is fucking crashing like how right now okay and at the same time he's made twitter a platform where basically you like nazis are able to function freely andrew tate is back on fucking 
Uh, but see, that's the thing. I think this is all marketing fluff. I don't think he's actually right wing. He cares about being right wing, or he. I don't think he cares about any anything. of this. He just, yeah. I think, he just wanted to do like a bit of marketing fluff, like Andrew Tate. I think he's just like a whole marketing fluff piece himself. I don't think Ma- he- Andrew Tate is a fucking uh, pyramid scheme yeah. uh, operator, yeah, and thing, and uh, they're just target. They know whom to target. It's yeah. like you know strengthening their base. They're basically like Airtel. They they don't care about getting new users. Their main target audience is the same target audience as for most. fucking idiot male uh, podcasters that have been that have popped up we are not like them we are not like those guys okay i promise you but like we really aren't like those guys man come on come on like come on you know us now but like the thing is i've seen a lot of these podcasters talk about fucking andrew tate yeah. like like he's and they always said be like oh nahi thoda sa wo matlab uska thoda problematic hai but he's mostly is fine only yeah. matlab he says shit that you can't say bro ha chutiye mere ko nahi bolne ka ye sab aise bhi theek hai kyun tere ko bolne hai kyun hai ye sab i don't i'm saying for a reason man <laughs> it's not like it's like pata hai ye pagal hai isne sadak pe aake ek uncle ko chutiya bol diya like mere ko nahi bolna hai kisi ko randomly tu kya baat kar raha hai yaar matlab what the fuck is the matter with you and fucking hero worship okay straight yeah. away like and i and i realize that it happens because the demographic is mostly like teenage boys okay uh-huh. who are frustrated and who and who possibly bhaiya, don't bhaiya, the... bhaiya main bhi alpha male hu theek hai main ko bhi alpha male ban rakha hai na fuck bitches bhaiya and who and who don't like and they probably lack the social skills and the emotional yeah. skills to like deal with women and that's okay like okay guys you will develop them later on if you have to okay and if you try to you don't have to behave like andrew tate To yeah, get like to, listen to the, deal with women in general shona and i were like young once upon a time we were also losers we loser teenagers and we did not really know how to interact with women that well but you know look at us now yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're not that great but, <laughs> but, but like we didn't get radicalized dude. yeah we didn't get fucking radicalized we fucking got i got married shona chop chop to you but yeah. like <laughs> i'm just saying like just be fucking normal and i think the the thing is there is a point in like young men male people male boys young yeah they get too disenchanted no, from no, shit and yeah, they just like you know the thing is during that disenchantment all of phase yeah. when nobody wants to fucking talk to them they're not taken seriously then they can either get radicalized or get out of that funk and just fucking be normal yeah okay i feel like most people still are just fucking normal but there are certain people who just get who we see online who are just fucking getting radicalized uh thanks to a lot of fucking idiot podcasts and also by people like Elon Musk and Andrew Tate at the top of that ladder you know so i just think that it is very obviously a a a scam that's not a scam but just a way for Elon Musk to gain popularity which you know all of this doesn't make sense to me mainly because Elon Musk is a fucking he's on the second richest man on the planet Why don't you behave like the second richest man? Why the fuck are you posting fucking twenty fourteen Facebook memes for old people? Like, I don't. I really can't understand. Like, why aren't you on a fucking private island, just doing whatever fuck you? Want? And his supporters say this like it's a fucking good thing. Yeah. By the way, they're like he could have been anywhere. He doesn't have to be. I'm like yeah, and he shouldn't. He shouldn't be here. He shouldn't be shit talking fucking random people. on fucking twitter yeah right? fucking buffet didn't do that okay to their credit yeah. gates didn't do that and they're idiots they're, they're probably assholes god knows what the hell they're doing in their fucking mansion you never Nobody know knows yeah. yeah but but they are not doing this in public dude cuz they know they don't have to yeah and their house of cards will come crumbling down if if they do all of the shit which is happening with if history boys. has shown us anything whether you look at anyone doing shady stuff whether it's business people or whether it's gangsters the more the one that th- tries to put themselves out there the most is the one that gets fucked the most eventually ironically enough i'm going to go to american gangster uh, okay. a favorite of the alpha male mindset pages yeah with denzel washington with denzel uh, Was- sigma male yeah. music playing in the background <laughs> so yeah. uh, american gangster states the loudest man in the room is the weakest man in the room and then denzel goes <laughs> mob man mob man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean so yeah that's what that's, that's what, what we think of elon musk and annotated and all these But <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't know. What yeah. uh, not that it matters. That's very toxic. Why am I talking like these people? Never mind. No more toxic masculinity. A little bit. If it benefits you, maybe go for it. Like optimize toxic toxic masculinity. Like if you're a boxer and you're like, I'm a, I'm a kill him. 
then i'm not going to like yeah, go at you yeah, for being aggression in sports is okay like it's 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 well channeled i think we have covered this topic yeah. far and wide now yeah. so yeah so yeah that's what we think of elon musk and andrew tate and this whole fucking idiotic situation that we find ourselves in let's move on to something to slightly more senior people uh, our next topic is around a little known bhopal mp called pragya singh thakur uh, she has recently been in the news shonak because she why, why? she I, i haven't been following the news that much oh so she gave a statement that you know hindus must keep weapons in their homes uh, because at any point you can be cut down or you can uh, you know you, you, a war is coming a religious war is coming just that that something along the lines okay. of that i'm paraphrasing of course and yeah basically she said hindus must keep weapons in their home so uh, shonak as a fellow uh, hindu yeah. what or at least family hindu family what weapons do you have in your home uh, i've got two guns they're attached to my shoulders so <laughs> guns out baby <laughs> fuck dude you suck <laughs> okay then maybe you'd like to meet my friends law and order <laughs> The, you can't see it, but he's pointing to his fists. Yeah, those, those are but, my fists. Yeah. I have very different weapons in my house. Uh, is that a reference to your uh, genitalia? No, it's a reference to my books because knowledge is power. The greatest weapon is knowledge. The greatest weapon is knowledge with some ass. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean to say you don't have any weapons of ass destruction? <laughs> I mean I too have some weapons in my house I have like a bat I have I have like a fucking you know knife like the kitchen knife Yeah I have a couple of the, I think I have a big one also the one you use if in case you get a coconut in your house If you if I mean, you know if you've seen a lot of Jackie Chan movies you should know that if if you're creative enough anything can be a weapon Anything can be a weapon so we actually should consult Pragya Singh Thakur like I want to send her a list of I want to send her like these frantic emails With like a a photo, a badly pixelated photo of all the weapons I have in my house. Ma'am, ma'am, is this okay? Is this is this what we need? I have a I have a season bat with Kashmir willow. Oh shit, Kashmir willow. Oh, like you know. Kashmir like. reminds me, isn't uh, Mr. Vivek coming out with another film? It's called the Vaccine War. It's called the Vaccine War. Where it's about two vaccines going to battle. One of them is kind of a down and out loser. The other one is a prince, and uh, the down and out guy meets a little girl. her name is influenza and then they sort of get together but they realize they can't live together because if they're together then she will die yeah. and uh, so then he has to break her heart and go to the war at the war the vaccines are just injection spraying fucking liquid at each other and at the end of it a nurse comes in and says hey kya chal raha hai idhar <laughs> and then everyone sits down and i think you should say that uh, with a malayali accent cuz like they should always show nurses to be malayali in films <laughs> okay let me try my malayali accent कट कर दे ओके जस्ट जस्ट मेकिंग इट अ पैन इंडिया रिलीज फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू गाइज स्टारिंग अ लू अर्जुन वैक्सीन वॉर कमिंग टू अ थिएटर नियर यू Coming to a vein near you. They could then go so much with this movie, no? Coming to a coming to a fucking exposed vein near you. Coming to a clinic near you. Coming through an injection near you. Yeah. Coming in your bloodstream soon. Vaccine war. Can't wait, guys. Ten out of ten on IMDb. I can't wait for it. Moving on to what is our final topic for today? Uh, Shona, can you tell us what is the next topic? Next topic we're going to talk about the SSR case. SSR case is back now I suppose. There have been new developments like uh a mog worker came out recently. Okay. A mo- a mog worker or morg worker? Morg morg worker. Matlab morg way worker. Mor mortuary. Ha. Mor morg you worker ha. Morg. He came out recently uh with information that uh, as per him and as per the guys who did the post mortem it wasn't a suicide. and there were uh, uh there were uh, there were evidences or indications of violence on his body and other injuries that mm-hmm. showed struggle uh, he said that uh, sushant came to him and told him to give him justice i that was Wait, he said he said he came in his dreams or something like that i don't know that was the headline and i didn't read further because <laughs> so wait this guy said once again is his is his new is this new development that he 
लेट द ऑटोपसी में कुछ घपला हुआ है और वॉज इट दैट दिस गाय केम टू हिम इन अ ड्रीम I don't know. See, I didn't read the <laughs> article further. So why would you read the headline? Was enough. Why would you, sir? This content needs to be put out there. That's why you would read this article. <laughs> no, but he said that uh, Sushant. Ke, no, so of course his first thing was that uh, there were uh, issues with the autopsy and the way things were done, and then he said that basically his conscience uh, told him, or in the form of manifested in the form right. of like SSR and told him to give him justice. I don't know what else to say about this, uh, other than uh, I hope that that morgue worker uh, th- finds a clear conscience one day. One could even say he's beating a dead horse. <laughs> he could be, you know, yeah. he he's beating a lot of dead horses. Yeah, which he does regularly. I think he beats dead men. Yeah, but or does he beat two dead men? Which in which case he would be a necrophiliac. Would he be a homosexual ne- necrophiliac? You did say he came out. Now we don't know if he came out of the morgue, came out of the closet. We don't know. I don't know where <laughs> to go. We, we, yeah, we talked ourselves into a circle. <laughs> Now uh, I guess that's the case. But Shonak, that's not the only celebrity death news that has come out recently. Uh, another case has come out. In which case, two people, and I swear to the audience, I'm not making these names up. Uh, an actor, actress, actor, TV actor, Tonisha Sharma. and or tanisha sharma uh was found dead she was found hanging in her boyfriend or ex boyfriend's green room on a set is that correct and the boyfriend's name is shehzan khan shehzan khan and the reason i told you guys i'm not making this up because the first time i heard these two names i was like this is exactly what one will hear in a fucking web show about like you know if you have to mention like random tv actor names tanisha sharma and shehzan khan shehzan khan yeah would be the most like tv actor names you could come up with yeah the, they sound very they sound they sound very fictional they do they? sound very fictitious yeah. I, i mean we they still might be we don't know you know <laughs> yeah they might be stage names for all we know <laughs> for all we know but yeah so basically she was on dead this man has been arrested and people are now uh, going on the love jihad uh, train with this and they're also speculating uh, foul play whether whether it was a suicide murder things like that you know as as generally happens with uh, yeah. crimes in the country I would also like to allege foul play with the TV industry in general and why it's still around. I would uh, like to I would like to be the voice of reason here and uh, as a as a person with a legal background as as a man of law yeah. as a custodian of the law correct as a person of rules and regulations much like Gandhi and Nehru. I say you shouldn't speculate like the internet is fucking rife with people who speculate because they've seen a couple of web shows and they've seen a couple of movies and uh, investigations don't work that easily over here man like a you can't trust any of the investigating authorities or the agencies because they can be bought or they're just generally incompetent and b like you weren't there so also no c is adding to your a point actually i i mean they're not i mean we watch american true crime shows or whatever and we watch like and we we expect the same kind of level from indian author and even the american police isn't like super smart or anything but they have the resources in india we don't the police don't have any resources but you know so that is also a big factor in all of these things where they can't like our expectations of what they can do is the, the, what they can really do is very little because they don't really jaise mai uh, there was a joke about this on a podcast series like called number one bullshit where they were talking about that you know that chandrakant serial killer thing that came on netflix i don't remember so th- was th- there was a series on netflix called indian predator usme hmm. chandrakant ke upar ek hmm. which was they were talking about ki how the police you know that police wale ko puchte ki aapko ek case solve karne ke liye kya chahiye to bolta hai tar task force aur ek vehicle theek hai so if you read they are fucking having to you know show like ki oh i'm using the vehicle from this time to this time for this reason you won't just be given a fucking vehicle willy nilly you know so i mean even for something basic like that you have to like fight yeah for which brings me to my original point also that don't whether when it comes down to a crime uh it's it's natural to speculate because we all want to make up and complete these stories in our head honestly there's no point to that all our speculation is moot and uh, you know whether be it a lack of equipment or just be it incompetence because in the arushi talwar case i was studying in criminology uh, 95% of the evidence was destroyed because they gave uh, access to media persons to the crime scene 
Correct. Like it was a heavily contaminated crime scene, and you know a crime had been covered, uh, uh, a crime had been committed there, because it was just the details of it were so gruesome and so like brutal. You have blood on the screen, or you have blood on the scene. You have like corpses lying around, and even then that was contaminated. So just like like speculation is pointless here, and uh, don't put your weight behind. Basically, don't get em- emotionally invested in any theory that you might come up with. Dad said, "I think Ekta Kapoor did it." <laughs> so, just like she murdered the rest of uh, a majority of uncle and auntie brain cells in this country, she has she also. Have a better TV culture before Ekta Kapoor. She did. So the thing is, I was shocked because when I went to college and my I went to like a film school, they showed us, you know, the, we would have screenings almost a screening a day, and we the, we would be screened like these Indian TV shows from the eighties and nineties. and man they were really good i mean yeah okay they were not like up to your matlab modern day standards but you could see that if this culture would have continued today we would have had like quality tv quality programming quality tv programming and the web industry wouldn't have had to be such a big revolution where now everybody is just moving yeah. you know it would have been more balanced and it would have been a lot more quality heavy and it would have been more organic the move the shift to web um but that hasn't happened because ekta bur sucks but uh, that said this does look shady as fuck because who kills themselves on a set having been on set you do feel like killing yourself but um you know i don't understand why uh, you would just be found hanging in a green room like that is that is a bit a bit sus don't you think so you know like again i don't want to speculate on that and uh, i'm just concerned i know you don't i'm just trying to get you <laughs> get you to speculate <laughs> <laughs> I'm just concerned because this was like a 20 year old girl, and I don't know if it. Spe- she was 20. She was 20. Old. Oh yeah. my god! And she was, and like as recently as 20, 15 or 16, she'd been doing like child roles. Oh. Yeah. So I mean. So she's been in the industry for a while. Then, it's she's like. been in the industry for a while, and this is like it's it's tragic, and I don't know what it speaks to. You know what culture it speaks to. I think it it's a, it's not a great sign in any case. Yeah, man. I think this because there's an alarming rate of TV serial. Like TV actors who end up on this road, right? Whether it's whether there's foul play involved or whether there's self harm involved, uh, I think it no, speaks I to like a very. I understand it also quite well now. I feel because having, I mean, not that I've worked in TV, but having just worked in general in the industry as a writer, I mean, you know, you do see that people um, have a certain ambition for themselves when they start out, and then eventually, when you get here, it's a very grimy industry at times. It can be very shady. it can be very unprofessional also it can be great also at times but it can be very unprofessional and all of these things can take a toll on you because you in your head have these expectations of being you know th- th- this th- this grand delusion that you have d- delusions of grandeur i meant to say yeah. that you have you know that you i mean you're looking at the most famous people and you want to get there and but you're not able to also the industry is not it's not like you're doing like some great artistically fulfilling work you know so it's it almost feels like a factory job after a point when it's not supposed to be and uh, even if you get like highly paid or whatever you see that your end is just going to be at like a fucking big boss house eventually so i mean what is what are you really i'm not saying that i'm not by the way i'm not trying to say that these are the reasons why she might have done it or even if she did actually do it herself or there wasn't any foul play but i'm saying in general i can try i have seen people deal with these questions when they are young actors or even old i have i have known fucking people because i grew up in bombay yeah. in uh, both of us in yeah. lokhandwala you know like i mean we've grown up with these stories there have been yeah, yeah, models yeah, there have been actors and actresses who lose their minds and lose, and we and we read about it in the newspapers the next day so again uh, strictly we are just commenting on the culture of the internet Uh, around crimes in general and around the and also the culture yeah. uh, you know that we have experienced a sort of uh, not experienced but sort of been witness to from an outside from an outsider's perspective since our childhood and like yeah. th- for example i know people who are like actors they came here to be actors now they are like 45 but they still have those dreams of being the leading star in like of 25 year old ka role so they try to look younger and it's very very sad to see and they i mean they just don't get over that dream you know if you're like committed to it a lot of these people are also rich by the way yeah. like th- th- that whole story of you know the poor struggling actor is true for a lot of people but some of these struggles are actually rich they come from like family wealth 
they come here and sort of just spend it from other parts of the country of course yeah. and they so, even they also establish their own businesses sometimes exactly they do normally they do but i think the downfall you know it's worse for people who experience a little bit of the fame yeah and they can't get that again like they can't they can't uh, bounce off that to a higher pedestal yeah yeah and uh, i think you'll you'll see a number of those people walking around where we are also like you'll uh. see these former tv actors and all who who do don't get shows anymore and i'm sure they have to keep up some uh, appearances some appearances and some semblances of the fame they once uh, enjoyed but now they can't so you know it's like a it's it's not a great place to be in on that very sad note we <laughs> are we are we, is there anything else you want to add on this case Uh, nothing on the case nothing on the case nothing on the case okay so yeah i guess we have come to the end of yeah. episode 5 of the bourgeoisie podcast uh, how was it chonak this time i think it's a great reminder that sometimes when we need to display gravitas we can mm. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an indicator of our emotional and uh, social maturity yes we are very emotionally and socially mature all right so this was <laughs> this is either bourgeoisie season 1 episode 5 or season 2 episode 1 so however you want to look at it you are free to because we are just that kind of a open minded podcast uh with that thank you for joining us and we will be back next week we'll be regular from now on we'll be back next year next year bro ah, happy new year bro